Good afternoon and welcome to the 2020 Economic Recession and Preparation Channel. I'm your host Tony on this Friday, July 31st, 2020, the last day in July. And it would appear that the $600 unemployment extension is rejected by the Democrats and both the Republicans as the extension fails to come up with a an extension, a short-term extension at least, of the deal. So that means that millions of unemployed people, the 54 million unemployed that we currently have, including this week's tally of 1.4 million the additional as of yesterday uh, report, that a deal is not in the works this week. And so they would have to wait until uh, the unemployed would have to wait until next week or the week after that. Uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said that I think that they understand that we have to have a bill, but they just don't realize how big it has to be, quote, she told reporters. She said that a one-week extension of the unemployment benefits would be worthless since people in many states have already stopped receiving the additional $600 bonus. Although the CARES Act set July 31st as the final day of paying the additional weekly benefits, States that disperse their unemployment benefits on weeks that end on Saturdays or Sundays um, will see the benefits already ending Saturday, July 25th, July 26th. Now, even if they were able to pass a short gap measure uh, as an extension until they can work out a longer term extension in both the House and Senate, it would still take a few weeks. There'll be a few weeks gap before unemployed workers will receive that benefit, unemployment experts say, because states will need to reprogram their computers to input the new dates for the extra pay, um, a significant obstacle for many states, meaning that they rely on outdated computer systems or legacy computer systems. So uh, we don't have a $600 extension. The economy is still on borrowed time. We have oil that is still lagging around $40 a barrel. And there is talks now, according to MarketWatch.com, that OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum and Energy uh, Countries, are bracing for added supply. They're planning on turning on the countries of OPEC, particularly Saudi Arabia and other countries, are planning on to increase the oil supply in both the U.S. and abroad. So another over deluge supply of oil is going to be leading to oil prices struggling to rise again. Okay, you remember the first time oil prices fell all the way down to um, lower than $20 a barrel. So now they're planning on increasing the supply of oil. It's never a good sign. And also the dollar, the dollar continues to struggle. It is falling. The dollar index closed somewhere around above $92, but it has been falling. We have U.S. consumer spending rising for the straight and straight month as people stock up on essentials, um, not just for this sickness, but also for hurricane season um, and just getting what they need before things get really bad. However, personal income dropped by 1.1% last month after decreasing 4.4% in May as government welfare, welfare programs slowed. You see, as we have this stimulus that's ending, once we get this last stimulus bill, if it passes the $1,200, um, that will be the last stimulus check of the year. As a matter of fact, it'll be the last stimulus check of this recovery, quote unquote. Personal income or discretionary income is going to continue to fall as taxes will increase as we come out on the other side of this recovery. We never had a recovery. We're not getting a recovery. And so, therefore, what we're going to have is we're going to enter a deflationary period for every asset except housing, food, and utilities. But everything else, every other asset, um, cars, um Anything like that will be in a deflationary spiral as the dollar crashes and as we get deeper and deeper into this recession, yea, even a depression that is on the way. Now, initially, the only hope that the media has been touting to us today and this week is that the big five companies, Apple, Facebook, Google, Amazon, uh, Netflix, etc., 
were posting the biggest earnings, but that's they represent more than 50% of the market share on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So what happens when they start not earning money as a result of so many people with lost jobs, so many people with lost income, and robots replacing jobs in these warehouses, factories, uh, robots replacing jobs in Walmarts and hotels? What happens when that revolution comes as well? It's going to be an absolute disaster. And that's why we must continue to get prepared because we know that this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just the beginning blocks that are being laid for this economic collapse. And it's worldwide, mind you. It's not just the United States. I don't want to leave up my friends in um, Europe, Asia, South America, Africa, you name it. Everybody's going to suffer because everybody has overspent. Everybody has deep debt. The United States is over $26 trillion in debt and unfunded liabilities. In addition to that, they want to spend even more money because this next stimulus bill is going to be at least $3 trillion. Okay. And so that's going to make that inflation is going to tip, tick up for us in food and energy prices. If they pass this, someone has to pay. You know, there's once a saying that goes, there's no free lunch. There's an old saying that goes, there's no free lunch. If you believe there's no free lunch, which I believe there is no free lunch, meaning that everything that we get for free, quote unquote, someone is paying for that in one way or the other for that cost of utility, for that cost of a good or a service, whether you're in a big city, a small city, a suburbia or a rural area, somebody cost of labor, time or production is paying for that. And so we know that in the end of this lost decade, which I like to call starting next year from 2021 to 2030, this lost decade of stagnant wages, high taxes, high inflation, and 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 no real physical jobs. So we basically go into a depression because consumption is down and supply is down, limited supplies because we don't make anything over in the United States, we're getting a double whammy. So as that continues to eat away at your purchasing power, it is important that you use the dollars that you do have to your advantage. And what do I mean by that? Well, for starters, you should be figuring out how can you grow your own food? How can you grow? How can you get your own water source? Um, either converting a water source with a Berkey water filter or another type of filter or buying property with water on it, a little pond or a lake, or having your own supply of food, water, clothes, shelter, and some of the other things that we're going to need to survive. Community is going to become absolutely crucial for all of us to survive in these neighborhoods as crime is going to increase because the police, they only come right now as a response unit they come after the thing after the event has gone down they are reactionary they are not proactionary so that leaves us to be able to defend our own supplies and you know what that means we're going to have to be able to do that which is not a problem for most of us you know we understand that that's what we have to do it's just that crime is going to be on such a big level especially as these bills fail they don't pass these bills the stimulus bill and this extra unemployment benefit extension through the remainder of this year, then we are going to see problems before November election. That's just the way it is. Crime is going to go up. We're going to see uh, more homeless on the streets in these cities such as New York, Chicago, L.A., D.C., uh, Detroit, Minneapolis, Dallas, Denver, Seattle. We're going to see more and more homelessness and more and more crime go up. And we're going to see more and more stores and businesses closed this this sickness transition economy transition is going to take two years to complete through 2022 as google apple and facebook already said they're going to have their workers work from home so as a result of that we know that this transition into a cashless or digital society or whatever it is that is coming is going to take at least two years to transition and the rest of us are going to be in the in a depressionary state the top 1% of 1% are going to be with all the money, all the resources, all of the monopolized things. But we can survive if we work together and if we use the spending and the defenses that we do have for good and don't waste time on distractions. 
distractions such as uh, sports teams, uh, who's winning or, or what celebrity said who or what. That's not those are all distractions. What we need to focus on is on preparation, security and getting our mind right to go through this next depression because it's going to be at least a 10 year event and personal income is falling daily even for those who have jobs it is becoming harder to keep up with bills and to live life and to keep up with expenses because we haven't had a raise in 15 years and a real raise okay when adjusted for inflation and so that's what's going on on today's report thank you for joining me and i look forward to seeing you on the next report in the meantime stay safe and stay prepared god bless